Right, let's get let's get straight in. Let's get straight in. So first of all, what is crypto in simple terms? So crypto is cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency is a digital currency. So similar to a fiat currency like pounds, except it's fully digital. There's no physical crypto. It's all digital. In simple terms, that's what crypto is. It's an online digital currency. Why do people invest in this digital currency? The main reason people invest in these digital currencies is speculation. The cryptocurrency market right now is still new, although crypto's been here for 13 years, Bitcoin's been here, but it's still relatively new in terms of mass adoption, etc. So the reason people are investing in it and investing in these crazy altcoins or other coins like you see meme coins, you'll know, Dogecoin, etc. These are all just pure speculation. The same way that happened in the dot-com boom when the internet was, was new, the first 10 years of the internet, people were just speculative investing in anything that was related to the internet because they seen the internet as being the future so they were speculating on any business company related to the internet that is why people invest in it I've just seen a comment there did you make a new insta I've been contacted off another crypto glasgow asking if you want coaching service for 200 up front no that is a scam there's a lot of scam pages we only have the one page instagram don't remove the pages unfortunately i'm going to go into later on how the scams work in crypto as well so that you can stay safe from the scams because we know a lot of people that have been scammed in crypto. So I want to tell you some tips to make sure that you never lose a penny in crypto. Why should people invest in it? Because it is a new technology. The internet was a new technology. It generated so much wealth in the 10, 20 years of the internet. And most of the biggest companies in the world are tech companies. Tech is the future. Crypto is tech money. When you invest in crypto, you're investing in tech. It's a natural progression of money moving from physical government money to decentralized digital money. So what decentralized means is that no one is in charge of it. Essentially, everyone is in charge of it. So the pounds that we use, the government money that we use, the government is in charge of that money. They decide how much to print, how much to give away. They decide everything about that currency. But with Bitcoin, We'll take this stream mainly on Bitcoin because that is the number one crypto. So with cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, no one is in charge of that. No one can say, we're going to add another 10 million Bitcoin and then we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to change this. That can't happen. There's no central authority like a government. It is evenly distributed. If there's any changes ever going to be made in cryptocurrency, there's voters' rights, essentially. That's the easiest way to think of it. It's like voters' rights. Anyone who holds the crypto can have, it's, it's called a governance token. I'll try and keep this as simple as possible. So in crypto, if any changes are ever to be made to this crypto, it goes out to everyone and everyone decides if it should go ahead and it goes with a majority rule to keep it fair but government currencies they decide it's on one central authority to decide and that often leads to bad things greed high inflation etc so the difference with crypto it's decentralized so yeah you're essentially investing in a decentralized currency that no government can control that no government owns no one can control it only the entire people that use the currency can control it if they come to a, a vote together, that's the only way they can make any changes to a cryptocurrency. So how and why did you get started in crypto? For me personally, I'll tell you this as quick as possible, my quick story, because I'm sure some of you have already heard it. So as soon as I left school, I was a roofer. I've always been into business and finance and stocks and stuff like that. Fast forward 10 years of working. So me and Don, we're, we're trying all these different things. We're investing in stocks. We're trying this, trying that. And one night, Don said, is look, a guy in my work is into this crypto thing. He's just paid off his mum's mortgage, etc. So me and Don liked the sound of that and we started researching. From then, we researched, we invested. So me and Don have been in crypto now for five years, is it? So that's why I get invested in crypto. That's why Don got invested in crypto because they've seen people make money from it and thought I could do that as well. So that is why I got started in crypto in very short. It's for the money, of course. That's why people invest to speculate for money. And how do you get started in crypto? It's best to learn a bit first. When I first was exposed to crypto, I learned about it for a good few months, maybe four months or so, maybe even longer before I bought Bitcoin. When I first got involved in crypto, I thought Bitcoin seems dodgy. This can't work. There can't be this decentralized currency like governments won't allow it. So that was my first thoughts on Bitcoin. But over time, 
over the, the months of learning, I realised that that's the whole point in Bitcoin. That's why it's so valuable, because no government can touch it. No government can control it or stop it or confiscate it. That's why it is so valuable, essentially. That's something that I never knew at the start. But after learning, I thought, wow, I seen the value in it. And then I bought Bitcoin. What does Warren Buffett mean when he says crypto has no fundamentals back in it? So I think he means that it's purely speculative and that there's no actual fundamentals behind it. Like there's no real tangible thing behind it or business behind it or purpose or use behind it but he's actually wrong of course he's wrong he's i don't know he's like 150 year old he probably doesn't understand the technology but 99 percent of cryptos don't have fundamentals behind it they are total garbage and i'll explain more on that in this stream that 99 percent of cryptos are trash there's around 20,000 cryptos and there's only a small bunch that are actual real products so he's right that majority has no fundamentals behind it but it's not all crypto so for instance xrp which we like is solving the problem of cross-border payments so if you're a business and you work overseas or you work overseas and you want to send money home the fees for cross-border payments so if you were sending money from india to here you would have to pay cross-border payments from all across the world but if you're doing it at scale through a business and you're sending 10 million the fees on that can be hundreds of thousands of pounds so there's huge fees incurred in sending money across borders because there's so many middlemen that need involved when you send traditional money but with crypto with xrp you send it instantly for a fraction of a penny you could send 10 million dollars in the click of a finger for under one penny it would be fee if you send it the traditional way 10 million dollars cost you four hundred thousand dollars to send it and it would take five days six days and it would take time to settle you would send it and you wouldn't know if it had landed in another person's bank yet so xrp is solving that problem you have utility coins like the swiss bog token where so swiss bog for anyone that doesn't know is an app where you buy crypto if you hold the token of that exchange you get lower fees you get higher interest rates etc so there's actual utility behind it so when buffett says there's no fundamentals there is projects that do have fundamentals like the gaming tokens there's gaming economies most projects technically do have fundamentals behind it but majority of them still are garbage but he's not on the ball with that one there i think he's involved in legacy investing he doesn't like anything that's new which is fair enough he's sticking to his own game and just bashing the the new technology it's the same with peter schiff who's the big gold bug he just bashes on crypto continually because it's against it's against what he invests in he invests in gold it's a competitor so that's why they bash and say negative things because they've got influence they've got big influence in the legacy markets is buy and hold a good strategy it's so tempting to sell and see the profits go up any advice on this would be appreciated so yes statistically the best strategy in crypto is to buy and hold that has always been the case. The reason for this is if you try and trade, then essentially the market always works against you. So when the market is is rallying, you'll start to buy and then the price will dump and then you'll start to sell. Essentially, you'll always be on the wrong side of the market and that's through emotions, which I'm going to lead into as well. The market is designed to do that and play with your emotions so that you do buy at the wrong time and sell at the wrong time the market essentially will always win so the way that you can protect against that say you invested here if buy and hold is your strategy from halfway through 2019 the price done nothing but fall so if you try to trade it i'll sell now and i'll try and buy back lower you should never try sell to buy lower if you are going to do that you don't do it with all your funds so if you had one bitcoin you would never sell your entire bitcoin in the hope of buying back lower because what tends to happen is the market reverses and it goes up the way and then you need to buy in higher so you've lost twice essentially by selling to try and buy, buy back lower the only way that would work is if you sell to buy back lower and it doesn't go lower and keeps going up you just stay out the market you don't buy back in higher should never buy back in higher so yeah if buy and hold essentially is the most profitable way if you held from any that this time here you, you're still in massive profits now you don't want to be buying tops or buying all-time highs which is another 
mistake that many beginners make so I want to go into that as well. In fact, we can do that right now. The best time to buy and the worst time to buy crypto. This sounds very easy when you see it, but when you're living through it, it's entirely different. So when would the best time to buy on this chart be? It would be right here. This is the best time to buy on the chart right here. So what was happening on this date in 2020? It was the COVID crash. So that COVID crash, there was panic, there was fear, there was depression, there was mania, the world was on fire, it was doomsday. So the best time to buy was doomsday. Now, when is the worst time to buy? And it's here when the prices are up. So here at this date, what was happening at this time? So the market was booming, PayPal had just listed crypto, Elon Musk has just accepted that Tesla will accept Bitcoin as payment. The news is just amazing. Everything's going so, so good. That's the worst possible time anybody could have ever bought crypto. So there's a massive lesson in that. The best time to buy crypto was in total depression, panic, fear. And the worst time to buy was when everything was going amazing and all the news was fantastic. And I'll go into more detail why that happens. So total total depression is when you want to buy. You want to buy the fear. We, we always say that on the channel, buy the fear, sell the greed. Because at, at these high prices, everybody's greedy. Everybody's buying it. Everybody you know is buying Bitcoin when it's really high in price and nobody wants anything to do with it when it's low. You need to flip that mindset because that's what how the, the herd feel. They're excited when everyone's excited, when the prices are high and then when prices are low, they think it's over, game over. That's when you need to be buying. You need to be buying the fear and selling the greed. So the reason that all the good news stories and all the positive narrative ha happen when the prices are high is so the big players can sell their crypto. And when I say big players, that means businesses, Wall Street, big players, people that have got thousands of Bitcoin, the big players, Wall Street essentially, Wall Street and friends. How this works is I'm the Wall Street guy. I've got a thousand Bitcoin. I want the price of the Bitcoin to be as high as possible so that I can sell it for a massive profit. So I'm the Wall Street guy, I'm really rich. I've got a lot of friends in media, etc. I own media companies, etc. I own other influences, other places that can put out influence. So when the prices is really high, this is when they crank on the good news. This is when they crank on all the influencers. Round about this date is when everyone on Twitter and Facebook, Instagram, was putting laser eyes in the in the display pictures because Bitcoin was going to 100k, Bitcoin was going to 200k. All the positive news stories were coming out then. The reason for that is when all the positive news stories are there, that creates demand. And when people start buying, that means that me, the rich Wall Street guy, I've got someone to sell to. Because see, if there isn't a hype and I've got a thousand Bitcoin I want to sell, I haven't really got anyone to sell to. And if I do sell that much when there's no demand, the price can crash. So the big players, they need to sell to somebody essentially. They need a demand there to supply them it with. So during these peaks and bull runs, that's when the news is at its best. So you just need to think if the news is so good and everything is going so well, this is a top, it's a top signal. And it works the exact same in the opposite way. If everything looks so, so bad and it looks like it's going to zero, it looks like this is the worst ever, then that's positive. That means the market's going to turn around. Because again, these big Wall Street players, they want to buy back in again. They want to rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. The crypto market and every other market it's just cycles and patterns that repeat and repeat and repeat. It's the rich whale, they're called whales in crypto. So whales is people that hold a lot of a lot of crypto, essentially. You call them whales. They sold out up here when it was high. They want to buy back in again. They want to make more money. You don't just make money and think that's me done. They want to buy back in again. So as they get positive news stories printed up here, everything's going amazing, all the positive influence up here, the exact same happens in reverse. So when it's down here, you'll get all the terrible news stories. You should sell Bitcoin, it's going to zero. China's about to ban Bitcoin. Russia's announcing that they're going to jail you if you use Bitcoin. The USA has just banned several Bitcoin. Like that's all the news stories you'll get when the price is low down here. You get all the negative news stories when the prices is low and then when the price is up you get all the positive news stories so you just need to do essentially the exact opposite of what the news is saying what the the big players are saying because the big players 
are saying at the bottom that it's going to zero, but they're buying it. And then at the top, they're saying it's going to 200K, but they're selling it. So with the big players, you don't listen to what they say, you watch what they do. And you can watch what they do in crypto because it's all transparent. Although you can't see the exact wallet that's selling, you can see when wallets are selling out of their positions. So you can see when whales move their money about. But that that's so important. That's like the, the number one mindset switch that you need to have in crypto. Because this is the way the chart looks now. See if you zoom in, you have a giant build on, you have a massive crash. Essentially what's just happened the past six months, here it's here. And then you have a big build on again. It isn't just this build run that's happened. When you zoom in on the charts, that's all that happens, always. Massive bull run, massive correction. When the prices is up here, Bitcoin is going to the moon, Bitcoin's the best thing ever. Amazon are going to start using Bitcoin. PayPal is going to start using Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going to a million dollars. The news is amazing. Everyone's using it, everyone's buying it. As Soon as the price starts crashing, Oh, crypto is going to zero. You should avoid it. You shouldn't buy it. But turns out that when the news is saying it's going to zero and you shouldn't buy it, that's when you should be buying it. That's the best time to buy it because look what happens after that. Goes on giant bull runs. And it does that through its entire history. Crypto. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Everyone panics down low. Everyone buys when it's high. You just need to do the exact opposite. So if you feel the market is going so bad and the prices are terrible and you feel it's going to zero, that probably means you should be buying. And if you feel amazing, you feel so good about crypto, you think this is the future, it's going so well, you should probably be selling it because that's what the big players do. So what can you expect from crypto? What everyone's here for? Money. Can you expect money from crypto? Yes, you absolutely can. As soon as me and Don get involved in crypto. We sat in losses for two or three years it was, we sat in losses, but we knew that basically just what I just explained a second ago there, when the price is high, when the price is low, bad news, etc. We knew that, so we knew we were living through that. The news is so bad and it goes on for a long time as well. You need to be really mentally strong and that's why we say like you should go to the gym or go running, keep your mindset sharp because if you're already down, and then the crypto price is down and then all the news stories are negative. Sometimes it's hard to to brush it off and it, it can get on top of you. So it's good to try and stay as fit as possible and you can, you can think outside the box. All the news is saying the worst things ever, but you are in your own mind. You're like, no, this is fine. I know that this is what happens. I've got conviction here. I'm holding strong and I'll be rewarded for it. That's what me and Don thought for two and a half years, we were down 90%, 95%, 99%. We were gutted, <laughs> but we knew that we just kept buying and we knew that the market will turn around because we'd seen every cycle before. So what can you expect from crypto? You can expect, you can expect to make the money that you want to make, but you can expect to experience, experience tough, emo tough emotional damage, <laughs> emotional damage if you've seen that, that meme it is tough on you because it seems like you're the only one that knows what's going to happen because every every other news article news source that you're reading is saying negative things so another top tip if you're a if you're new to crypto try and f find someone else try and have a friend that you can you can speak to about crypto because it can be lonely, like maybe nobody in your family does it or nobody in your friend circle is into crypto. So the way I thought of it was, I thought of this the other night, that it was good that me and Don, we were friends at the time anyway, and we both got into crypto at the same time. So when the market was down and we were losing thousands, we were down 99%, we could speak to each other and we could vent. We could say, oh, this crypto's fucking, this is murder, like, it feels like it's going to zero. We just used humour all the time. We just made jokes. We just made jokes about crypto and that got us through. So a top tip would be try and have someone else that you can lean on in the crypto journey. Because one day when you're thinking, you might start thinking negatively, like, oh, what if crypto doesn't go back up? What if crypto goes to zero? What if crypto is a scam? What if crypto gets banned? All the negative things you think, 
I seen on the news that they said that this might happen. If that happens, this might happen. And then you can just go down a negative spiral. But if you've got someone else there that you can speak to that's in the same mindset, it's on the same journey, you and your friend that are on that journey, you know what you are aiming for, it will help. So try and have someone with you in the journey. That's a top tip because it helped me. Because a lot of people enter the journey, they think it's fine. If the price goes down, I'm just going to buy more. It'll be fine. But the price goes down, the news hammers them with negative news articles and they quit. They just quit. They're like, nah, this time it's different. It is going to zero this time. It's different this time. Because we'll get even worse stories. Like the stories that are happening now, there isn't really any stories happening now about crypto that are negative. Like the price drops are, well, they're saying the price drops is to do with the Fed, the wider economy, etc. But there's no there's no actual proper negative news with crypto yet, like really big news, like governments banning it, etc. So you can expect even worse news articles. So if you think this is bad, or if you think what you've experienced bad, expect worse. Always expect much worse because it gets bad. It does get bad. But as you can see from this, during these times when the prices crash and it gets really bad, that's the best time to buy. The news articles back here in 2018, Bitcoin crashed from 6K to 3K. I'm sure it was like in a day. Um, it was 6K here. It fell to 3K and it was like the end of the world for crypto. The crypto space during this time was the end of the world. It was bad. The news articles were bad. The Twitter space, the crypto community was just losing their mind because we'd been in a massive bear market for years, almost two years. And then we thought at this time, right, it's going to start to go back up now. And it just dumped 50% in a day and the space went mad. But to those that held or to those that bought when it was at its scariest point, they bought Bitcoin at 3K. And then what happened after that? That happened after that. They bought it at 3K, it went to 69K. So the people that bought when everyone was losing their minds and running for the hills, they made the most money. It's hard though, it's really difficult. It's difficult try to hit that buy button when everything is looking bad. You want to hit the sell button, you want to sell when the when the prices start dumping, you want to sell, but you should be buying. And then when the prices are rallying, you should be selling, but you want to buy even more. It's hard to control, it's just natural human emotions essentially. Does what you're saying apply to Ethereum since they've fell since the merge, but the news is what they've achieved is massive for crypto? Yes, it is. And that's another term in crypto, buy the rumor, sell the news. So if you get massive news hypes, you should be selling them. You should buy the rumor, then sell the news because it does always tend to dump on the news. And again, that ties into what I said earlier where these big players sell on the news articles because see when the big news story happens, for instance, like Coca-Cola is set to accept Bitcoin. That's the news. All the big players will sell then because they know that there's going to be so much demand because Coca-Cola's entering crypto. So that's when the big players can sell the Bitcoin off. This one, important one for beginners, what scams are in crypto and how to avoid them. So there is a lot of scams in crypto. There's a lot of scams in most industries, but cryptos even more because there's a lot of money in crypto just now. Crypto is the, the hype of the times right now. So there is a lot of scams involved in crypto. Most of the scams are phishing style scams. So you would get phishing emails. The way to protect yourself from phishing emails is just never open or click any crypto related email you'll get emails saying you need to update your details whatever it is they say but the scary thing all you need to do is click a link and then your crypto will be stole like you don't even need to put in your passwords or anything you just click a link and your crypto can be stole so basically never never click anything on a crypto related email ever if you're on swissborg and there's a whatever happening on the app you'll get a notification on the app same with binance bybit whatever it is never take any action in an email because it's just too risky that you could get hacked or lose your crypto so the biggest scam in crypto is phishing emails 
but also you get impersonators so like we seen earlier on the stream the fake pages of crypto glasgow saying invest with me etc you get that a lot also as well i just spoke to someone last week the person lost quarter of a million from an email it was a cold email people saying invest with us he thought it was buying crypto but turns out it, it was being scammed essentially and they use like fake apps so it looks like you're buying crypto but you're not so it looks like it but you're not so this guy lost quarter of a million pound which is insane so yeah watch out for cold emails cold emails are pretty standard for anyone that's maybe younger you'll know about cold emails i think it's more an older audience for the the cold emails so just watch for emails another one as well is impersonators so not just impersonating crypto glasgow but impersonating anyone at the crypto glasgow team reaching out hey do you want to invest etc just never do any business with anyone through email or direct or instagram messages it's a scam it's always going to be a scam the other scams would be investing in cryptocurrencies that seem like a hype that maybe celebrities are promoting or they just seem really lucrative like invest now and you can make five thousand dollars in a week whatever it is the big term in crypto is do your own research before you buy any crypto always do your own research thoroughly never just buy something that someone tells you always do your own research first thoroughly before you buy anything a lot of crypto projects can just rug pull essentially which means pull all the liquidity the coin goes to zero your money goes to zero you can't get it back i was thinking about one the other day and it was was it crypto eats this was like peak bull run there was this scam basically and it was like a crypto version of just eat and they done it was a it was a pretty big scam they rendered images of like the scooters with the crypto eats on it they got influencers promoting it i think like joey essex like big influencers were promoting this scam and it turns out it was totally fake they rug pulled it went to zero they got away with millions 10 million 20 million whatever it was from a fake project so again you should be fine being cg pro members we'll alert you on any of that stuff we do all the research beforehand before we speak about projects etc so you should be fine in that way where to buy crypto and where to avoid buying crypto cg we recommend swissbog we've used it for the last two years it's been great they're a european exchange they've got the best regulation compliance with uk banks etc so we use swissbog there's multiple exchanges you can use. Binance is another good one. You want to stick to big exchanges. So Swissborg, Binance, Bybit, Coinbase if you must, but we're not fans of Coinbase. Crypto.com if you must, but we're not fans of Crypto.com. The reason we're not fans of any of those exchanges is in the past, they've had zero integrity. There's been a lot of negative things that's happened on those exchanges. And we were fans of Coinbase, we were fans of Crypto.com and over time that's eroded by shady things that have happened. Users' funds have been stolen and they sweep it under the rug, they gaslight the users on Twitter. We get messages from Crypto.com users saying, I've just, I had my life savings in Crypto.com, it just gets stole, I had two-factor authentication on it, my crypto's been stole and Crypto.com are saying, sorry we can't do anything about it like you're not getting your money back so that's a crypto.com issue because the password get passed and the two-factor authentication has been passed so their security has failed and then they won't reimburse their customers so we would avoid them like the plague but if you want to use them use them at your own risk you can still buy it there and just hold your crypto on a wallet ledger nano so things to avoid in crypto as a beginner some of the stuff i mentioned previously like buying hype buying news events you should never really buy the news you should buy the rumor so you should buy before the news is made and then sell on the news so things to avoid as a crypto beginner is FOMO which means fear of missing out for example you are thinking of investing in crypto and you see this coin go from one dollar to fifty dollars so you see that and you think wow that coin is just on 50x like wow i need that that's the fear of missing out you see something happen and you you get the fear of missing out you want that as well but that's how you lose you need to buy before the price goes up this sounds so simple like extremely simple but because it's it's human emotions 
it works in the opposite way. People don't want to buy when it's scary. They want to buy when the price is high, when the price is on its way up. So things to avoid, FOMO, don't want to do that. Buying hype. So, so there was a time last year where Elon Musk was going on Saturday Night Live, a big TV show in America, to promote Dogecoin. Well, he was going on Saturday Night Live and he said that he was going to speak about Dogecoin. This <laughs> right here, pinpoint at the top, was when Elon Musk went on Saturday Night Live. From that day, it's crashed ever since. So anyone who bought all that hype when Elon Musk was going on live TV and he was going to mention Dogecoin to the world is when it topped, is when the bubble popped. So again, there's another massive lesson in there that well, one, don't buy, buy the news and two, don't buy the hype. There was so much hype in the weeks leading up to this. So again, it's like buy the rumor, sell the news. The space knew that Elon was going on Saturday Night Live to discuss Doge. So the price of the massive rally before then, then come Saturday Night Live, it topped from the event, from the TV show get aired, the price crashed ever since to it's down here now. So don't buy hype. That is classed as hype. You don't want to buy hype. Basically, if everything looks amazing and all the news is good, you probably shouldn't be buying it. You want to be buying it when other people aren't buying it because that's when the most opportunity is. That's when the most gains are there to be made. And things you will experience in crypto, FUD. So FUD is fear, uncertainty and doubt. This is when you get negative news articles, negative stories, just negative vibes in the space. This is fear, uncertainty and doubt. It's a natural human emotion that we all get. So you will experience that. You will experience FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. You will experience impatience. It breeds impatience because the price moves up really, really, really fast. Like you can see here. So let's go to any coin. So the price moves up. Here's Ethereum really fast. That's the price moving up. It happens over a short period of time. So that's from 2021 to one year, really fast up. Then you get long, 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 boring sideways action, which breeds impatience. Because during this long time, we, we all experience this, everyone at CG, it's so boring and the space is, it feels like there's nothing happening. It's it's in a similar way right now where there isn't really much happening in the space. There's no excitement. So during these boring times, that breeds impatience and you think, I might just leave crypto. It's just going to go sideways forever. So let's say you waited two years and you thought, I'm done with this. I've waited two years. I bought Ethereum at $200. Two years later, it's still $200, I'm out, I'm selling it. Then what happens after that? Boom, massive bull run, all the way to $5,000. So you will be impatient. Crypto will make you impatient. It's, it's supposed to do that. It's, it's not just crypto, it's any financial market, any chart will have long drawn out processes which creates impatience. And then when people get impatient, they sell essentially. You'll experience anger and depression as well, unfortunately, because when you get massive price drops, it creates anger. Basically, all markets and charts is based on human emotion. That's it. It's all emotions, all emotions. And we've spoke about this in the past, like when we first started the, the channel two years ago, that's all we really spoke about was emotions. And people maybe think that's, I don't know, not the best way to look at it, but that is entirely how this market works. It's all on emotions. So all on fear, all on impatience, all on euphoria when it's on its way up, then anger on the way down. So you're angry when it's going down here, then it starts looks like it's going back up, then you get, you get hope. So you have a massive crash and then it starts to go back up and you've got hope and then it has an even bigger crash down again. So that then breeds depression. You're angry, you've got hope, your hopes are crushed, and then it's the depression. It's, oh, this is never going to work. It's never going to work. 
and then you get a pump up again, there's hope. So it's always just human emotions, always. So if you can be aware of that and aware that you will be emotional, even if you're a rock solid person and you think, I'm solid, my emotions are solid, crypto will bring out your emotions. You could even write down notes, write down how you're feeling in the market. Then you can go back and you can look at a chart. So you can look at a chart on say, say you wrote in your diary or on a bit of paper here, your emotions, what your emotions were like here after just experiencing a massive fall. You'll probably be writing, feel terrible. I feel like crypto is going to zero. I might just sell and cut my losses, etc. That's what you will write then. And then a week later, after you experience the price go back up, you'll be writing, feeling quite good about crypto, it's starting to look good. I might buy some more. I'm up for the journey. Then it crashes again and it gets drawn out and then your emotions are different again. So you can basically take note of your own emotions. Then when the price is really high, take, take a note and you'll be like, this is amazing. Crypto's the best thing ever. I've told all my friends about it. I'm going to buy even more. That's your emotions then. Euphoria. This is euphoria. When it's at the top, it's euphoria. Everybody's making money. Everybody's spending money. Euphoria. So that is what you will experience. You experience all of those. Fear, uncertainty and doubt. Fear of missing out. Impatience, anger, depression, euphoria, fear, hope. In fact, I will get up this to show you. So this is the Wall Street cheat sheet. Essentially what I've basically just explained there. So you get disbelief, the rally that will fail like others. Then the price goes up, hope, a possible recovery, optimism, with the price is going up, this rally is real, belief, time to get fully invested, this is going up, thrill, I'll buy more on margin, got to tell everyone to buy, then euphoria, I'm a genius, we're all going to be rich when the price is up. Then prices come down, you've got complacency. We just need to cool off for the next rally. Price comes down more, anxiety. Right, why am I getting margin calls? This dip is longer than I expected. Then denial. No, oh, my investments are with great companies. They'll make a comeback. It's fine, it's fine. Then panic. Shit, everybody's selling. I need to get out. Then capitulation. This is what you don't want to do. Capitulation. I'm getting a hundred percent out of the market. I can't afford to lose more. Then anger kicks in. Who shorted the market? Why did the government allow this to happen? Then price drags out, drags on for long. Then depression. My money's lost. My retirement money's lost. How can we pay for all this stuff? I'm an idiot. Then when the prices move back up, this this is this is a big one. So when the prices are down for so long and there's there's panic, then anger, then depression. In people's minds, they've essentially already lost. They've admitted defeat. They've hit the depression stage. It's over, it's done. Then the price goes back up. When the price is moving back up, they're in disbelief. They don't believe that it's going back up again because they've already lost in their mind. They think it's just a, it's a sucker's rally as it says there. It's only a sucker's rally. It's going to crash even lower again. And that's the disbelief. That's why people don't buy into the market when it starts pumping again, because they feel we're in a bear market. It's just going to keep going lower. The price might be going up now, but it's it's going to, it's going to crash again, but it doesn't crash again. And then the cycle repeats. So how have they got it? So they've got the psychology of a market cycle, the feelings appearing as the market fluctuates. So this is a good one, Have save this on your phone. This is basically how the full well, crypto market works, but every financial market, any investment market, any chart that you see will be similar on, along these lines of how the, the prices move. Right, so that's all then, we'll call it a day at that. We could get another one of these streams if you're interested. Let us know if this was helpful, let us know. Cheers for tuning in guys, we'll see you soon.